Hi, Mr. Stevendorf. It's Lydia Reading again. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Okay. Listen, I thought um, I thought about this since our last conversation, and um, I'm going to try to make your life easier. What, what you're looking for probably I, I actually was able to read through the, the stuff, so I, I actually can give you a couple of names if you want. Oh, great. Go ahead. Um, there's a there there was a consulting doctor, which sounds like they spoke to him on the phone and described stuff. And that was Dr. Chang, and that's from uh, September of 25th of 08. Wait, wait, wait. September? 25th of 08. Of 08? Right. And th- these were all at the Jersey City Medical Center. I didn't find any reference anyplace else. It's all in the Jersey City Medical Records, which is what your concern was about. Okay. Um, and then on uh, October 1st, there was there were two doctors involved then. There was an attending, a Dr. Vladimir Jelnov, mm-hmm. J E L N O V, mm-hmm. and a Dr. Yogesh, and the last name was A H U J A. Wait, wait, A H U J A. J A. Can you spell the first name? Sure. Y O G E S H. And it's and the last name is A as in Apple, H as in Harry, U as in uh, I don't know. Okay. Umbrella. Uh huh. J as in Jack, A as in Apple. Correct. Okay. Can you spell Vladimir for me? Sure. V L A D I M I R. Okay. And, and I didn't see a first name for Dr. Chang, so. Okay. And those are the those are the three that I found any anything for. And what do they say? Well, they 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 all indicate that there's a psychosis, so they were all making a psychiatric diagnosis. Yeah, um, here's here's what you gotta know. Um, Doctor Chang, oh, he was consulted with on the phone on September yeah, twenty. That's how it looked read to me. It looked like the uh, the the, uh, the nurse or whoever was there uh, had had talked to you and then read 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 him or told him what she had observed or he observed. Because I couldn't read any of the signatures, you know that's that part is impossible. Um, and that, so, and so Dr. Chang then signed off on um, again a, a psychiatric diagnosis. Um, here's what you don't know: on September 25th, 2008, um, I won against my landlords in court, and they were, uh, <laughs> and so there there was no uh, eviction on October 1st. And what my landlords did was they lied to Jersey City Medical Center, and they had their attorney lie to Jersey City Medical Center. Um, as the, the diagnosis of psychosis is not what I'm concerned about because I caught them lying. In addition to the phone consultation, there was a fax that was sent from the municipal court to Dr. Chang. And the very next day on the 26th, I went down to Jersey City Medical Center with a witness and I said, okay, Dr. Chang, if you want to talk to me, I'm here in your front lobby with a witness. And what I got from Dr. Chang, and the witness has already confirmed this, is I can't talk to you, I can't talk to you, I can't talk to you. But, Dr. Chang, you're having people come to my house in the middle of the night, you know, at 930 at night, accosting me on the street saying we have to talk to you. No, you don't. I'm not your patient. I'm not the patient of Jersey City Medical Center. Right. Um, so... What I'm what I'm really looking for is um, there was a uh, there's a doctor named Doctor James David. You probably want to write this down. It's Jimmy David. I, I didn't see his name anywhere in the file. Um, I mean, I look at I have three different reports from uh, Jersey City Medical Center. Okay, and, and a couple of them are, are pretty lengthy. Uh, unless he signed something, again, there was there was a there's a bunch of different signatures from from a physician or a nurse or a, whatever an SPT was supposed to be standing for. But, uh, I mean, they're, they're signatures. I can't read this. It's not like they, they wrote it in any way you could actually read it. Um, the names that I got were all ones that were from uh, summaries that were done, and there's, it's, it's typed out so it's, it's clear. You can't miss what it, what it was. So these are summaries that were sent to, to Social Security Administration? Mm-hmm. 
And yeah, what? We, we, we requested the information from them back when we were working on your claim in 2009. Okay, but I told Ms. McKinney that those medical records were deliberately falsified. That, you know, I, that part I don't know anything about. All I can tell you is what I know is in, I, I can tell you what's in the file. Okay, you, so you got three summaries. Do you know the dates on those summaries? Um, they, they were all from, uh, there, there, there was the one from September 25th, there was one from 10-108, and there was another one, I, there was a later one, I think from 09, but there was no, that one I could not find a uh, an actual a name other than something that was handwritten. Um, if you, if you, you know, again, you have the option of, of of going to your local social security office when things get up and going, and requesting actual copies of those uh, of those records, so you could get all of them sent to you. Uh, yeah, but what what concerns me is that uh, I've been labeled as having a psychiatric impairment, mm -hmm. and when I looked up the psychiatric impairment, it says schizophrenia. So I called back and and double checked with your office. And um, I'm like, I don't have schizophrenia. I'm not psychotic. Um, and Ms. McKinney was aware that the records at Jersey City Medical Center were falsified. For example, um, Stacy Dix Kubiowski, who claims I'm her patient, I'm not. Um, this is happening, I believe. I don't have the, the medical record in front of me, but I think this is happening October 1st, 2008. And I'm going to quote. Oh, I, 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 I have the paper like uh two feet away from me, but she says on October 1st, this is from the nurse's notes, I believe, uh, quote, as per Stacy, patient has been mailing threatening letters to Judge Rodriguez, end quote. Now, everybody knew that was a lie. Dr. Chang knew that was a lie a week before, because a week before, on, the, on September 25th of 08, there was a fax that was sent from the municipal court to Dr. Chang. And that fax was a request from me to Judge Rodriguez to have her recuse herself from my case because a uh, month before in August of, two, of 2008, she refused to enforce no contact orders against my landlords when they were violating them. So um, there are no, I mean, if there are threatening letters from me to Judge Rodriguez that I mailed to her, where are they? Can I see them? Show them to me. Where are the postmarked envelopes? It's a lie. You know, if I was really mailing threatening letters to Judge Rodriguez, don't you think I'd be prosecuted by now? Uh, I, I would assume so. You know, that's that's not part of our file, so I don't yeah, know yeah. anything. I don't actually. I mean, I know a little bit about it from the stuff that you sent to us, but I mean, I don't really know anything about it. And that wasn't. No, it's not. We didn't. We didn't. We didn't we didn't contact the uh, the court, or we're not. That wasn't really part of anything that but we were involved what, in. But what concerns me is that, um, you know, I got my social security disability. Where where where's the information for the five herniated discs and the pinched nerve? And, you know, that's that's the the insurance company is signing off on that. My doctors are signing off. In fact, I didn't pay my doctors. My insurance company paid them. So and also there were records that I sent from the welfare office in New York. I was physically assaulted at Jersey City Medical Center on Tuesday, September 30th, 2008. They almost murdered me. The, the attack was so violent that months later, when I, when I was in New York and I was applying through welfare before I could even get to disability, the welfare doctor, and she's doing everything she possibly can to like downplay my symptoms because you know they don't want to give me welfare and they don't want to give me disability, She's saying that she can still see swelling, tenderness, and redness. That's how violent the attack was. And she's doing a psychiatric exam that says her cognition is good. You know, she's, she's not psychotic. She's not schizophrenic. She's not mentally ill. She's talking about my, um, my, my abnormal neck and my abnormal spine. So how is it possible, sir? I, I, saw, I, I saw that report as well, yeah. I remember it. I remember it very specifically the... Uh uh, the mini mental status that they did, and, um, you know, long-term memory was fine. Short-term memory was, uh, it wasn't perfect, but it was still good. Uh, but there was really no signs of any, I remember reading that. There did seem to be a, uh, uh, certainly a conflict in what the, uh, the other medical was saying. Um, in any event, um, at, at this point, and if you have a dispute about uh, about what the information that's in the file and whatnot, you're really going to have to go to the, the local Social Security office, go through them. Um, I'm sure you can actually, you know, put in writing and say you want this information removed from your file. Uh, I sus 
I didn't. I don't remember offhand that uh, we probably are probably about time to do a uh, review of your claim in any event. Um, but you, you can again, you can deal with that through the local Social Security office. At this point, there's really nothing else I can do. The file was done. It's been approved. It's been there for three years. So. Let me just get this clear, and um, and thank you very much because you've been very helpful, and I appreciate your assistance. For the last three years, I've been labeled as a schizophrenic. You've been receiving disability benefits based on that, yes. Okay, I'm not schizophrenic. Do you know how horrible this is? I'm not schizophrenic. Um, I can imagine it must be very, it must be very upsetting, and I and I do because I do know also that there was um, there was a. a I, again, I didn't read because it was less important. I didn't really read in depth through the uh, the findings from the from the accident, the physical impairments, and and all of that. Other than I know there's again there's quite a bit of it in the file, um, and I'd read through a couple of them. And again, I, you know, I didn't see anything related to a mental impairment. All of it was relating to a physical impairment. Um, so who, but that's that's what that's what was done in 2009. So let and me I, I can't I can't yeah. un, I can't actually un, undo that at this point in time. Um, what you can again what you can do is go down to your local social security office, say that this needs to be taken out of your file, and, and I'm sure that will institute a review. Your folder will come back. We'll we'll take a look at the physical part of it, and we'll do a uh, we're going to do we'll end up doing a a current review, so we'll be, you know, chatting to doctors or whatnot um, at some point about your physical impairment. And you know, what concerned me was your your the the assistant uh, regional director that I spoke to, um, Barbara um, Lord. Lord, um, she had commented. She's like, you know, I don't see anything about you know um, uh, your loss of flexion, loss of rotation. I'm like, but Dr. Houseconnect was writing that. I have my records. He was saying, you know, there's a there's a percent losses here and there's a percent losses there. So I know that's in there. Uh, like I, you know, I, again, I didn't I didn't read that all all that closely. But again, it, it's only going to have an impact going forward. I mean, we you you've been paid um, based on this. I, I don't. Uh, you know, I don't think that we would be going back and trying to to, to redo that period, but we we may well end up looking at how you are now going forward physically. Um, and and uh, again, but the only way you can deal with that is you're going to have to go down to the local Social Security. Office. And and they would remove the defaming statements from absolutely. The, okay. Absolutely. Um, then my other quick question is, who's the decision? Who was the decision maker? Who 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 falsely labeled me as schizophrenic? Was that Miss Miss McKinney? Uh, Miss Kinney followed the medical evidence that was in the file. Um, she she looked at it and and um, and it was also was I'm I'm sure it was probably reviewed by internally by one of our um, review physicians, and it's kind of a joint decision, but it's primarily Miss Kinney's decision, yeah. So I think that this who is what's the name of the of the reviewing doctor? Um, you'll have to request the records on that. Okay. Um, and because I discussed in depth and detail with Miss McKinney, these records are falsified. Here's how I can show that they're falsified. I mean, they even said at Jersey City Medical Center, Robert Ruiz, my landlord had uh, slashed my door. I do remember seeing his name in there. Yeah. yeah. Robert Ruiz had my landlord had slashed my door with a knife. And um, there was a person who took a photograph, and in the photograph you see a masculine hand with hair on it. Now, I do not have a masculine hairy hand, and I posted the photograph on the Internet to protect myself from these people. Robert Ruiz writes in, it's her hand in the photograph. Now, I'm standing like three feet away from Robert Ruiz. He can see my hand. I do not have a masculine hairy hand. So, Robert Ruiz... You're not so grossly incompetent that you can't, that you honestly and sincerely believe that the hand in the photograph is mine. More to the point, my landlord admitted to slashing my door with a knife to the police. And Robert Ruiz, did you bother calling the person who took the photograph? I mean, come on. Yeah, yeah you know, I don't know. Again, I, that that stuff I don't know anything about. So, um, but uh, you so do I'm, remember? Do, do you remember this quote from Robert Ruiz in the? Uh, 
Uh, I don't remember that one specifically, but I know I saw his name a couple of different times. Okay. He, he actually was probably the only signature in the file that you could actually read from all the medical places. So. Okay. Um, so then I'm supposed to go down to um, the Social Security Administration office. I could request the name of the doctor who signed off on this. You can request. You can request uh, a copy of of your record, of, of all the information that's in your file, and, and that will be. Um, and, and you should be able to get that. It's like a freedom of information request. You, you yeah, but I want the name of the doctor who signed. Well, you'll get all the paperwork that went with it, so it'll be in there someplace. Yeah, but what, what I'm asking you is because I'm not asking because I'm trying to give you a hard time. I've had these dirty tricks played on me before. So, in, in fact, right now I'm being stalked by a doctor, a psychiatrist. I was named as a witness against him in 2006. So what he does is he runs around behind my back telling people that I'm his patient and that I'm mentally ill. Do you know how sick that is? It's uh, very strange. No, it's it's retaliatory, and that's the way doctors uh, try to um, frighten people into not being witnesses against them. You know, I'm the test case that shows when you stand up against a dishonest psychiatrist or a dishonest medical school, they run around behind your back and tell people you're mentally ill when you're not, and then they stalk you through life. And all of this would be like material for stand-up comedy, except in Jersey City, these people almost murdered me. Right. So my question to you is when I request my, my – because I'm going to hold this doctor's feet to the fire. I'm going to hold Miss McKinney's feet to the fire. I spoke in depth and detail with Miss McKinney. There were lots of ways that she could cross-check that I was telling the truth, and I was cooperating with her. There were lots of ways that this doctor that she consulted with could, could have um, worked with me to discover the truth. So basically, for the last few years, there may be more victims of Jersey City Medical Center. In fact, I checked with a contact person of mine in the Russian community. Here's what he reports. And he's so frightened now, he won't come forward anymore. But he reported back then that Vladimir Jelnod advertises by word of mouth in the Russian community, if you want to get rid of someone, pay me cash, and I'll put them in my locked psychiatric ward. So it's not a question of if there are sane people in the Dr. Jelnov's lock psychiatric wards. It's a question of how many. Right. Sounds pretty scary. Yeah. So, anyways. Um, so my question luck, to you before, before I let you go is, will the name of that doctor be revealed to me? Yes, it should be. Absolutely. Okay. If it's not, I'll contact you. Okay. That'll be great. All right. Thank you, sir. Okay. Good luck. All right. Bye. All right, bye-bye.